I've tried OCTVB on Rocket Lake for about a month now and I want to share my experience. Let's first have a look at the hardware that we'll be using the Intel Core i9 11900K, an Asus ROG Maximus 13 Apex G Skill Trident Z DDR4 4266, an ROG Strix RTX 2080 Ti, a Seasonic Prime 851, the EK Quantum X Delta Tech with EK Quantum water cooling, our favorite open bench table. Let's first have a look at the performance at stock. When running Prime 95 small FFT with AVX enabled, the CPU operates stably at 3836 MHz with 1.029 volts. When running Prime 95 small FFTs with AVX disabled, the CPU operates stably at 4321 MHz with 1.074 volts. In our final overclocking strategy, we take matters in our own hands. First, the CPU can now boost up to 5.6 GHz for up to two cores. We keep the subtle tuning of the VF point offsets. Second, we manually configure the OCTVB. The main focus is to ensure that the peak frequencies are only set when the CPU temperature is low enough. Third, we change the cryo cooler setting from cryo mode to unregulated mode. Upon entering the BIOS, Go to the Extreme Tweaker menu. Set AI Overclock Tuner to XMP1. Set Intel Adaptive Boost Technology to Disabled. Set ASUS Multicore Enhancement to Enabled, Remove All Limits. Set CPU Core Ratio to By Core Usage. Set 1 Core to 8 Core Ratio Limit to 56, 56, 55, 54, 54, 54, 54, 53. Enter the specific core submenu. Set Core 0 to Core 1 specific ratio limit to 56, 53, 55, 55, 56, 56, 54, 54. Leave the specific core submenu. Enter the thermal velocity boost submenu. Set overclocking TVB to enabled. Set 1 core to 8 core active to enabled. For 1 core to 8 core active, set temperature A to 25, 20, 60, 64, 62, 60, 56, 52. For one core to eight core active, set negative ratio offset A to user specify. For one core to eight core active, set ratio offset to one. For one core to eight core active, set temperature B to 55, 45, 70, 74, 72, 70, 66, 62. For one core to eight core active, Set negative ratio offset B to user specify. For one core to eight core active, set ratio offset to one. Leave the thermal velocity boost submenu. Enter the VF point offset submenu. Set offset mode sign four to minus. Set VF point four offset to 75 millivolts. Set offset mode sign five to minus. Set VF point five offset to 35 millivolts. Set offset mode sign six to minus. Set VF.6 offset to 25 millivolts. Set offset mode sign 8 to plus. Set VF.8 offset to 50 millivolts. Leave the VF point offset submenu. Enter the AI features submenu. Set package temperature threshold to 85. Set regulate temperature threshold to enabled. Go to the monitor menu. Enter the QFAN configuration submenu. Enter the chassis fan configuration submenu. Set chassis fan profile to manual. Set chassis fan Q fan source to T sensor. Set chassis fan lower temperature to 30. Set chassis fan middle temperature to 35. Set chassis fan upper temperature to 40. Set chassis middle duty cycle to 60. Then save and exit the BIOS. We re-ran the benchmarks and checked the performance increase compared to stock operation. We achieved the highest performance in all benchmarks when running Prime 95 small FFTs with AVX enabled, the CPU operates stably at 4,523 MHz with 1.113 volts. The average CPU temperature is 85 degrees centigrade. The average CPU package power is 190.1 watts. When running Prime 95 small FFTs with AVX disabled, the CPU operates stably at 4,831 MHz with 1.191 volts. The average CPU temperature is 85 degrees centigrade. The average CPU package power is 200.5 watts. All right, let's wrap this up. It was pretty cool to finally be able to use all of the available Intel overclocking knobs and put them to good use. 
the per core ratio limit really helped prevent the weaker cores from boosting to frequencies that it would not be able to run stably. Tuning the voltages with the VF point offset or advanced voltage offset, however you want to call it, uh, gave me an additional 100 megahertz in multi-threaded, very heavy workloads. OCTVB didn't really change that much from Comet Lake. 5.6 gigahertz is a, a bit lower than the six gigahertz that we reached with Comet Lake. And I feel like the primary reason is that the architecture doesn't really scale that well with sub ambient temperatures. All right, that's it for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. Until the next time.